Good evening again, my friends. This is Kanita, and I greet you warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. And I welcome you to an Eventide devotional. You know, my friends, if you think back in your own lives, after the Lord called you out and quickened your soul, you began to get serious about the spiritual life, about our walk with the Lord in a way that you had never really thought about before. And in many ways, all of us are, how best to put this, we are quite unprepared for the walk that is expected of us. And because of this, we tend to think that from here on out from the time of our our regeneration the time of our awakening however you wish to phrase it that our way of life is to be to keep God's commandments to obey the law to cleanse ourselves from sin and reform our lives to cultivate holiness in thought word and action and so we go trying to reform and rebuild and reshape ourselves and mostly blundering and stumbling on in the darkness and all the while we never seem to get a single step forward we are forever looking for something in self to make ourselves acceptable to God we are often, the longer we try and the more we play at doing so, we become sadly cast down and discouraged because the truth is we cannot, when we search in honesty, find in ourselves that holiness, that obedience, and that calm submission to the will of God, that serenity of soul and spirituality that heavenly mindedness which we all seek because we believe that is what it takes to be acceptable in his sight and as we continue to struggle trying to find some reason within ourselves for this choice that has come upon us this new life these new revelations The more we look into ourselves, the more we see our quick tempers, our fretful, anxious minds, our rebellious thoughts, our times of coldness and barrenness at heart, and always our constant struggle, constant struggle, constant, constant struggle with the darkness within us that responds so eagerly to that darkness all around us. with the daily feeling that we get no better, yet often worse. We think that God views us just as we view ourselves, as utter failures in this, this constant stumbling and trying to rebuild ourselves and, and pull ourselves up by the bootstraps, so to speak eventually, my friend, brings on a great darkness of mind and a bondage of spirit until we seem to lose sight of our very, our very acceptance in Christ himself. And we get into the miserable dregs of self, almost ready to quarrel with, quarrel with God over our very state of grace because we seem so vile to ourselves that we cannot understand how he could love us and we only seem to get worse as we go along now we more the more often and the more deeply we pull up all these dregs and filth that we see within ourselves 
and keep looking at the dreadful scenes of wreck and, ru wreck and ruin which our heart presents to us, the further, my friends, in reality do we get from the grace of the gospel. For when we keep our eyes on ourself, trying to tear out that which is a basic part of us in order to please God, the more do we lose sight of the only grounds of our acceptance with God. Hear the words of Paul, my friends, from the letter to the Ephesians. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined us into the adoption of children by Christ Jesus to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved. According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, his righteousness, his satisfaction, or his sacrifice, his mercy. Oh, my friends, it is in his righteousness, his sacrifice, his mercy, and his love that we are accepted into the beloved. Not for any good works, any good words, any good thoughts, any good hearts, or for that matter, any good anything of our own. If there be any righteousness in us, any righteousness, it is only because he has placed it there, my friends, not because of any natural seed that we will ever find within us, no matter how hard we look. But the Lord will allow us to wear ourselves out worrying about our own righteousness, which is a natural thing. We all do it at one time or another. And after he lets us sink lower and lower into the pit of guilt and ruin from feeling that all our attempts to extricate ourselves have only plunged us deeper and deeper into the mire. It is here, my friends, in this pit of shame as we abandoned ourselves as hopeless and without merit here in this pit of death our Lord opens a door within our hearts here and his spirit floods our soul with a witness and a truth to keep us from sinking altogether into despair without hope without help and without an understanding here in this pit he immerses our soul in that vital discovery of Jesus, who he is, why he came, of his glorious sacrifice, thus making it known and clear to us, at last, at last, that there is a Savior, truly, there is a mediator, and there is a way of escape provided. Here, my friends, here in this pit, this pit of shame and death, this is a grand turning point in our walk with God when we finally see that the opening in the valley of Achor, a way of life, a door of hope, a way out, is not within us but within him as he enters us. The fruit and the effect of this divine illumination will be to cut into pieces and root up all of our fleshly wisdom, strength and righteousness and cast it away. God will never patch a new piece upon an old garment. All our wisdom, our strength, our righteousness must be torn to pieces. It must be all ripped out by the roots. That a new wisdom, a new righteousness, 
a new life may arise upon its prepared grounds. But my friends, until the Lord is pleased to drive us to this moment, to our own point of despair, and teach us through his spirit of illumination, we can never part with our own righteousness or give up our own wisdom. We cannot abandon our own strength until we get to this place. For these things are a part and a parcel of ourselves. They are who we are, so ingrained and innate within us that we cannot willingly part with them until the Lord himself demolishes and utterly destroys the house we have built up within our own strength, within ourselves. Then, my friends, as he flashes into our souls the vision of our own corruption and our own folly in a thousand ways and our own blindness to all things of the Spirit, only then does our wisdom fade away as he shows us our inability to resist any kind of temptation and overcome sin in any way by any exertion of our own our confidence in our own strength and righteousness dissipates and dies utterly and it is here my friends that we begin at last to put on the new man For it is only, my friends, as the bleached remains of our own wisdom, righteousness and strength are cleaned away and extricated does God prepare the heart and build us anew in Christ's wisdom, in Christ's righteousness, and in Christ's strength. But only so far as we come to this point, this point of shame and death and utter despair, and seek him without any acknowledgement or righteousness or worthiness within us, and accept his spirit, can a death sentence be carried out upon our own wisdom, our own strength and our own righteousness, and a new life in our risen Lord begin? It is exactly as Paul said, as dying, and behold, we live. Though we must die and die daily, my friends, behold, we do live. And in a sense, in a true spiritual sense, the more we die, the more we live. The more we die to self, the more we die to sin, the more we die to pride and self-righteousness, the more do we die to depending on our own strength and the more we die to ourselves the more we live to grace this is a law of spirit an absolute law that runs all the way through life runs through every experience of a believer the truth my friends has always been nature must die that grace may live the weeds must be plucked up, that the crop may grow. The flesh must be starved, that the spirit may be fed. The old man must be put off, that the new man may be put on. Amen. We cannot live unto God, my friends, and man at the same time. The more we die to our own strength, the more we live to Christ's strength, the more we die to the hopes of this world, the more we grasp that solid hope through grace, the more we die to our own righteousness, the more we cling to His righteousness. 
the more we die to the world. The more do we live for and dream of the kingdom of heaven. These are all a part of the grand mystery of life in the spirit, my friend. That the believer is always suffering, yet always in joy. Always emptying himself, yet always full. Always dying, yet eternally alive. And the more he dies, the more he lives. For the death of the flesh is the life of the spirit. And the death of sin is the life of righteousness. And when we finally put to death the old man, we find it is the very life of God within our very souls. Amen. Now this, my friends, truly this is our only way of escape. Our only way of overcoming. Our only way out. Our only way home as dying. And behold, we live Amen. Amen. Praise God. Oh, let me climb down here now. <laughs> Until the next time, my friends, go always in the strength and the wisdom of Almighty God, that the Spirit of God might always be strong within you. Until the next time, Good night.